Hello, this is Robert Smith. I'm here in, in Spain, and I'm currently in a museum, which is a, uh, a synagogue, an old synagogue. It's uh, many, many years old. And uh, so today I thought I'd share a little bit about this concept called the ego. Now, most of you may not realize this concept, ego, uh, basically started with Freud. And now Freud had a lot of interesting concepts about what ego is, and also had some other concepts that you know, I find is amazing, is... Um, a couple of really interesting ones. You know, Freud is considered the uh, father of psychology. Not only was he a cocaine addict and many other things, but he also had some ideas that that women had this uh, uh, penis in them. I mean, they wish they had the penis or, or wish they had one. I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's kind of amazing. And then, of course, he had this other concept that everybody's wanting to screw everybody. That you want to screw your mother and your father, whatever. So, so he's a he's he's the guy that came up with this ego concept. Now, to help you understand that that there really is no ego, ego is just something that we create within ourselves to blame why we have problems. You know, some will say edging God out, but but in reality, ego is merely just a um, a set of programming. You know, some will say ego is trying to boost yourself above everybody else. Well, ego also is the one who wants to keep peace in your life or wants you to use toilet paper or wants you to use your toothbrush. It's the one that tries to keep you in between the lines when you're driving down the road. The ego is really programmed as helping you operate within the world. Now, that's how it works. Now, now if you have created a concept called ego and you're blaming within yourself this this area called ego then all of a sudden you have a great excuse to keep your problem and there's nothing you can do about it because it's the ego's fault again we're still blaming and not taking ownership and so that's basically how it works you know and of course there's there it doesn't matter which which religion or which persuasion of thinking it seems like we always have to have someone to blame you know and even in spirituality we, you know, there's, you know, the controlling factor would be guilt or anger, the devil, sin, uh, uh, whoever. You know, it's them. You know, in America, it was the Russians, and now we have peace with the Russians. Now we got to blame someone else. So we always got to have this turmoil going on in life. Always some kind of affliction going on. Notice I have an affliction shirt, very appropriate for this video because um, they're always we're always trying to afflict something on somebody or blaming them because we have affliction. Now, infliction is really an internal process in how we see and operate within the world. And so one of the things I want you to understand is that there is no ego, but there are unconscious programming. Now, unfortunately, people who come up with these concepts called the ego or disorders or whatever are usually people who study it, wow, understand it, but they don't know how to change it. And that's why it's really important to, to embrace con programs or, or, or systems that create internal shifts, uh, process, cognitive therapy is one. And so what we want to do is create changes. Now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an NLP practitioner. I studied with uh, Richard Bandler and John Laval and also EFT. I started with EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, about in 1999, uh, April actually, a little over 10 years ago. And I began to use these processes and creating not only changes with myself, but my wife and also my children. And, and from one thing led to another, I started B set free fast, which is by Dr. Larry Nims, Tapas Acupressure Technique by Tapas Fleming, and many other processes, study of hypnosis, study of the mind, because it really has a lot to do with what we do and have and represent within ourselves. And so that's what we're looking for is creating life changes for ourselves, within ourselves, about ourselves. And and that's all it's really about is creating life changes. And so when we start understanding that once we change how we represent things and how we see things, our world starts to change. And of course, you know, there's many areas that you can start to focus on to create turmoil and affliction within your life. I mean, we can always look... Uh, I was inter interacting with some people who started, who discovered this concept, which it could be true, the uh, Illuminati, which is the group trying to control everything and control the whole world. And all of a sudden, they've been studying and watching this stuff for about um, a little over a month now. And about three weeks ago, she started having problems with her eyes and eyes running and all this stuff because one of her concepts said, well, I just don't want to be controlled. And of course... 
the amazing thing is, here she's studying about some society that's trying to control the whole world, and all of a sudden, she doesn't want to see it. And it's, it's really amazing. So, guys, uh, it's really important to be the, the gatekeeper of your mind and start focusing on what is good and creating what is good within your life. And that's the real key. Focus on what is good and produce what's good in your life. And as you do that, the world is going to start changing for you. And another thing, you know, that there was a lady who came to see me several years ago, and she spent uh, hours and hours in front of the TV after the Murrah bombing and the 9-11, and, and she couldn't leave the home. She was so afraid of something horrible happening to her, she just wouldn't leave the home. And the reason is, is that she was sat in front of the TV and watch all this garbage. Guys, do not sit around watching garbage. Turn that TV off. I don't even watch TV. I can't even tell you the last time I watched TV, and the only time I watch it is... Um, Maybe by accident, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's some some illogical reason to watch it, but I really don't watch TV, and I recommend not watching TV. And, and if you do like watch TV, watch a lot of news, a lot of murder mysteries, you know, something that'll entertain you a really long time. Just kidding, by the way. So, so re be really, just really be the gatekeeper of your mind, and then as you do that, your world's going to start to change. Be, be in control. Focus on what you want. Let go of everything you don't want. And since I'm in a, a, a synagogue here, um, you know, it's interesting about uh, belief systems, you know, because as, as an NLP practitioner, I study about what belief is and how beliefs work. And, you know, it doesn't matter what religion you are, whatever religion you belong to, that's the right one. I mean, it's the only one and you always, and everyone else is wrong. Everyone believes that way. And unfortunately, uh, people hurt other people because they don't believe the same as you do. Guys, we need to be more loving and understanding, you know. And uh, of course, there's some some of the one of the top three years, uh, has has killed more people in the name of God or love or whatever. So it's so crazy, guys. Learn to love each other, and if you're judging people, you can't love them. So let's just let's just create peace within ourselves and, and just make peace around the world. And as as you start focusing on what is good, you start getting more good in your life. Now I want to tell you something. If you focus on the negative. And if you keep feeling negative, you add more to the world. That means you project it, support it, and help maintain it. So, you know, just like uh, Mother Teresa said, I'd never, I never walk in an anti-war rally, but invite me to a peace rally and I'll be there with you. And that's really important because if you fight against war, that will help support war. If you hate war, you support war. And you feel the battle within you. So what we want to do is do what is right. Do what is good and then add more to the world and start being at peace. Again, the, the key really is paying attention to what you do inside you. And as you do this inside you, creating peace, loving yourself, loving others, everything is really going to start to change for you. And that's all that really matters. You can't control the world, but you can impact the world. You can control your inner world. And one of the most powerful concepts that we always have a problem with is being controlled and having no control. And you can't control the world, but you can control you. Take full power, full control of your life. Now, this tapping process and changing how you represent the world is the key. So, um, again, uh, this is Robert Smith. I'm in Spain, and I hope this helped you. If it, if it didn't, that's okay. Tap on it, move on. Tap on everything that bothers you. Keep your peace within you. Focus on peace. You get more peace. Talk to you later.